In the headlines, fresh attack claims 38 in Nasarawa communities. Fire guards shops at Ibadan's Agbeni market. Social economic rights and accountability projects urges World Bank to suspend disbursement of $800 million loan to federal government. And on the foreign scene, high turnout as Turkey votes in high-stakes election. Hello and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for joining. And now the details. At least 38 persons, including children and women, have reportedly been killed by a gunman in Takalafia, Karu, local government area of Nasarawa state. Reports say that the incident occurred following disagreement between farmers and herders after growing groundnut and maize plantations were destroyed by animals. Our correspondent also learned that the incident happened in Gwanja community close to Takalafia two weeks ago. The authority of Karu local government area had intervened in the matter and it was settled. However, the opposing side regrouped and launched a fresh attack on Gwanja community, killing four people. The deputy governor of Nasarawa State, Emmanuel Akabe, who led government delegation to the mass burial, condemned in strong terms the wanton killings and destruction of property worth millions of naira. He, however, assured that the state government will provide relief materials to the displaced victims, urging the affected communities to give credible information to the relevant security agencies. Fire raised five rows of shops at Agbeni Market in Ibadan on Sunday. General Manager of the Oyo State Fire Service, Iemi Aki Yinka, however explained that the fire had been put out. He said a security man at an adjoining bank placed a distress call to the fire service at 4.37 a.m. when the market was closed. Akinka said that no life was lost to the fire and thanked the CBN Fire Service for giving access to Oyo State Fire Service to use its fire hydrant to put out the fire. The cause of the fire incident is unknown at present. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project has urged the World Bank President David Marpas to use his good office to suspend any disbursement of an $800 million dollars loan to the federal government of Nigeria. The civil society organization is also asking the global bank to request from the incoming administration satisfactory explanations to justify the loan. Saraf urged the World Bank to reopen discussions on approved $800 million loan with the incoming administration to clarify details on the use of the loan since the tenure of President Muhammadu Buhari ends in May. A letter signed on Saturday by Sarab Deputy Director Kolawali Oluwadari challenged the World Bank to comply with its own articles of agreement in disbursing any loan. Now, barely 15 days left to the end of President Buhari's administration, Nigerians are expressing mixed feelings over the president's handling of the fight against corruption. The fight against corruption has been a top priority for the President Buhari administration as a leader. Now, the fight has been a, a top agenda of his government since taking over power in 2015. Trust TV's Ibrahim Ismail speaks to political experts and Gumbi residents on the anti-corruption crusade of the administration. The report. The Buhari administration repeatedly gives figures of assets recovered from thieving officials since coming on board in 2015. Some of these records were given by the president himself. While attending the London Anti-Corruption Summit in 2016, President Buhari said his government recovered assets and funds totaling $9.1 billion as part of its anti-corruption drive. But there are conflicting figures on the exact amount recovered by the Buhari government. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami said $1 billion had been recovered from May 2015 to December 2022. And some critics say the Buhari's anti-corruption fight may have complicated the situation instead. Somebody who has integrity, somebody who is honest. But unfortunately, the PDP that he went around for 12 years castigating 
as corrupt. It's even better because they have never charged somebody to court convicted and they relieve him. But he did same under his own government, something that is unprecedented. With less than three weeks to the end of Buhari's era, Nigerians share mixed feelings on the role of the former military head of state in the fight against corruption. He personally took a stand against corruption. But there were a lot of scandals that can only be uncovered after his government, but he is a good leader. I will give Buhari 60% in the fight against corruption, despite the current scandals. He has tried. So we I will score the government 55% in anti-corruption. They failed to get 100% because of the ongoing scandals. His cabinet have failed him. As the president prepares to leave the presidential villa, political scientist Dr. Babayo Sule said although the president will be remembered for his passion to fight corruption, his efforts were marred by countless flaws. It's either the Buhari's uh, so much propensity fight against corruption is just uh, a deception to get power, or he is honest but he has been overpowered, or he critically misunderstood the terrain of the nation. So therefore he approached the country in a wrong way, and at the end of the day he got consumed. In the last eight years, there are a lot of corruption allegations against officials of the Buhari's government, which remain in the minds of Nigerians. The most recent are allegations of corruption totaling 109 billion naira against the suspended accountant general of the federation, Ahmed Idris, and the 22 billion naira allegations involving the former minister of power, Salim Amman. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Gombe. Now, small and medium enterprises development is significant in poverty reduction and provision of employment to the teeming unemployed youth in the society. Successive administrations in Katsina State have said that they injected billions of naira in skills acquisition programs. Abdullah Hamoudi takes a look at auto mechanic business and whether the sector has benefited from the government support in recent years. These auto mechanics are operating without any training beside the one they had on the job with little or no modern working tools. Decrying less patronage due to high cost of spare parts, the mechanics blamed their condition to inflation and lack of government attention to their plight. The security of this job can be guaranteed if government patronizes us and co-opt our members in some special periodic trainings, especially at engineering department of Hassan Usman Katsina Polytechnic, to help and develop our skills. The last eight years have been a mirage, but we are hopeful that nothing lasts forever. And here we are, with only a few days to the end of this administration. It is our hope that things will be better. They expressed hope that the Dekorada's administration will make a difference, considering his vast experience as the immediate past boss of Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency, Smeden. We have a firm belief that the incoming administration of Dikwarada will be fair and just to small and medium enterprises. It is our hope that artisans like us will be considered and supported because of the important role the sector plays in the employment of labor. 
abiso wasu da lallai wanda ya zauna wani sashi shi sashen da mu yake hunda kai tsaye observers say businesses require a little push to develop the skills of the artisans to employ more number of youth to reduce restiveness and guarantee a vibrant economic development abdullahi is my amadi trust television news kaduna Ahead of May 29 inauguration of the incoming administration, there have been continuous complaints against some policies of the outgoing government of President Muhammadu Buhari. For instance, in Benue State, stakeholders in the farming business said that both the federal and state governments lived below expectations in the last eight years. Jimmy Azande reports. Benue is nicknamed the food basket of the nation because of the varieties of crops producing the state in appreciable quality and quantity. With advancement in technology and improved crop varieties, the farmers say the government has not done enough to help farmers. You know, what this country has done is, uh, should I say, a lot. Benue has been ignored despite the potentials. The potentials we have in Benue, apart from available water, is not going to be expensive. We have good soil that can good water retaining capacity soil with good water retaining capacity kind of that we support good agronomic practices and um, good impactful practices no any of our representative here has asked anybody there give me intervention for my farmers in Benue. nobody Liza, over years we have been getting it through vendors they will come and sell to us and we will buy. And for the past two years, Benue State Government has never procured a half bag. I'm not talking of a complete one in Benue here for farmers. So we have been sourcing for our own vendors outside. Some of the stakeholders said it is quite unfortunate that the leaders have prioritized other businesses instead of farming, which is the best for a struggling economy like Nigeria. As it is, we have a lot of challenge. By now, we didn't supposed to be here. Had they been, we are fully mechanized. And if you have all the machines on ground, we shouldn't have been here by now. This is my personal effort. No support from government. No support from anywhere, apart from friends and all of that. That if I cry to one of my friends that this is my challenge, they come in and help. For government, I have never benefited any support from government anywhere. The farmers urge the incoming administrations at the federal and state levels to do more for agriculture. Over the years, there has been good provisions for farmers in documents, but the stakeholder in the agricultural value chain said the reality on the ground is not commensurate with the policy documents. The All Progressives Congress has released the official pre-inauguration photographs of the President-elect Bola Tinubu and his vice Kashim Shetima ahead of the May 29th inauguration. The photographs were shared via Twitter by Tinubu's spokesman Bayo Onanuga. Onanuga confirmed that the Presidential Transitional Council for Tinubu approved the photographs. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, had declared Tinubu the winner of the 2023 presidential election. Running on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Tinubu defeated Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party and Peter Obi of Labour Party. Atiku and Obi are contesting Tinubu's victory at the presidential election petition tribunal. Now, all Nigerian students fleeing war-torn Sudan have been successfully evacuated from Sudan. The Nigerians in Diaspora Commission made the announcement on, federal, on the federal government's behalf. Since the commencement of the evacuation exercise on May 3rd, no fewer than 2,518 Nigerians have been airlifted to the Nigerian soil. Saturday's evacuation happened to be the 15th barge, where 125 more Nigerians arrived at the Namdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja. The evacuees arrived at 12.49 p.m. on a TACO B737-300 aircraft from Port Sudan. The latest arrival brings the total number of, of evacuated Nigerians from Sudan to 2,000. 371. You're watching the news update on Trust TV. Coming up shortly.
We'll take a look at alarming rate of youth unemployment. Details and more after the break. Welcome back from that break. This is the news update on Trust TV. Let's take a look at the top stories again. Fresh attack claims 38 in Nasarawa communities. Fire guards shops at Ibadan's Agbeni market. Now moving on, the Inspector General of Police Usman Alakali Baba has ordered the arrest of Afrobeat star Sheung Kuti, who was captured on a viral video assaulting a police officer. This was disclosed in a statement by force spokesman Olumuywa Adejobi. According to him, the incident will also be investigated. The IGP has equally ordered a speedy and full investigation into the remote and immediate causes of the assault and prosecution of this suspect accordingly. IGP Usman Al-Kali Baba assures Nigerians that acts of contempt, disdain for symbols of authority will not be tolerated, while offenders of such heinous crimes will be surely brought to book. But in a cryptic Instagram story on his profile, Sheung Kuti claimed that an attempt was made on his life and that of his family. While he claims to have proof of that, he noted that the person has apologized, thus he won't press charges against him. Now, unemployment across the country has continued to rise at an alarming pace, giving rise to fears that it may lead to severe societal dislocations. Unfortunately, the youth population is in the majority, which means that the young ones are bearing the brunt of the situation. In this report, Trust TV Kabir Lawal speaks to Abuja residents on how best youths can be engaged to make them contribute their quota to the upliftment of the country. The report. Unemployment figures in Nigeria are sounding a warning bell. Citizens are well within their rights to be concerned, especially as youths who are most hit by the negative parameters do not have a sense of inclusion. But it seems things will get worse going by the data from the National Bureau of Statistics, which recorded an increase in the national unemployment rate from 21.3% in the year 2018 to 33.3% in year 2020, and which is projected to go higher. In Abuja, youths are not ignorant of the worsening unemployment indices and want government to do the needful. I've always said that um, it's not in the hands of only government to solve the issue of unemployment. And uh, I'm happy that somebody like Ashwaji Bola Metinobu, who um, understands how the private sector works, what the private sector needs to provide the job, is going to be the president of Nigeria. And I like what he, man he says in his manifesto that he's going to incentivize um, private sector, the private sector to create jobs. So what that means is that if you create a certain number of jobs, you pay certain, you get certain incentives like less taxes, uh, uh, maybe credits by the government. If you look at the situation in Nigeria right now, the major problem is the youths are not being engaged properly. You understand? 
the government is trying i know and some companies are also trying but we need more companies because of the number of uh, youths that we have in the country while meaningful nigerians are also calling on the government to engage youth both male and female in order to make them more productive bring out the talent in our youths especially uh, the young women you know, when I talk about, when I'm saying like youths, what I mean by youths is both the male and the female. But at some point, uh, we are considering the, the female also because they also have their own talents. But the psychological beliefs in Nigeria <clears throat> and other cultures are banning the young ladies from contributing to the society. You see, when it comes to unemployment, the government has its own blame. The youth also have their blame. In an environment where you find out that government cannot really give everyone a job, especially our young school leavers, they need to find out where they fit in best by way of uh, talent. So I don't think the government can control what is happening now because the large numbers of students graduating from the higher institution into the labor market, they are more. They can't handle this situation. I just, my advice to the government is for them to create, I mean, give out grant for a young graduating student to go into to go into, the, into various businesses. Reports by experts have shown that in year 2024, the unemployment rate will grow to 43%, while inflation will accelerate to 20.3% in year 2023 and 20.0% 20 in year 2024. Kabir Lowell, Trust TV News Abuja. Now, on the foreign scene, voting counting is uh, voting Vote counting, rather, is on the way in Turkey's elections as President Recep Tayyip Erdogan faces the biggest political challenge of his two-decade rule. His main rival in is opposition leader Kemal, uh, and uh, more than 64 million people are eligible to vote to elect a president and parliament for a five-year term. The polls opened at 5, uh, five o'clock and will close at 2 p.m. Uh, GMT media organizations are barred from reporting partial results until the embargo is lifted at 9 p.m. If no candidate secures more than half the votes in the first uh, round of voting, a May 28 runoff will be held. Key election issues are the economy, earthquake relief, operations, brain drain, refugees and value identity. In a similar vein, Ghana's largest opposition party has chosen the country's former president, John Dramani Mahama, as its flag bearer for the 2024 presidential election. Delegates of the National Democratic Congress voted in primaries over the weekend to choose a candidate for both the presidential and parliamentary polls. Mahama was declared the overwhelming winner after polling 98.9% .9 of the votes, while his challenger, former Kumasi mayor Kojo Bonsu scored 1.1%. The former president was tipped by most political analysts to be the win, uh, the pro to win the primary based on his experience and influence in the opposition party. This confidence in Mahama was echoed by many of the more than 355,000 NDC party delegates who converged at 401 voting centers across the country over the weekend for the ballot. Now, still in sports news now, Leno Messi was booed by some Paris Saint-Germain fans in his first match since being suspended for his unauthorized trip to Saudi Arabia as the Ligue 1 leaders beat Ajaxio 5-0. Both sides ended the game with 10 men after Thomas Mangani aimed a punch at Ashraf Hakimi, who retaliated. Fabian Ruiz and Hakimi struck in the first half for PSG. Mbappe scored twice at the start of the second half before Mohamed Yusuf's own goal as Ajaxio were relegated. Ajaxio's best chance came in the 67th minute when Michael Barreto's right-footed shot from outside the box just sailed over the bar. Messi played the full 90 minutes returning to action for PSG for the first time since he was suspended by the club for two weeks after traveling to Saudi Arabia without their permission. Now, Christophe uh, Galtier's uh, PSG 
uh, are just four points away from a record 11th French title. They are six points clear of second placed Lens with three more fixtures remaining. Now, on a sad note, the Nollywood community has once again been thrown into mourning following the death of Murphy Afolabi. Afolabi died less than 24 hours after news broke out on the death of St. Obi, another Nollywood star. The death of the thespian, who was popular in the Yoruba movie sector, was announced on the verified Instagram page of another movie star, Odunladi Adekola. The famous Nigerian actor was born in Oshun State. He hailed from Oshogbo town. The actor, who clocked 49 last week, attended Ira, Polit uh, Ira Polytechnic, Oshun, where he studied movie production, mass communications, and theater arts. He featured in over 60 movies. And that's it for the news update on Trust TV. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.